If you're making an intro for your YouTube channel or production company, then the challenge is making something that represents you concisely. So today, I'm challenging myself to put together an intro for Cade Visuals, my production company. Now, I've got a logo and a name already, which has appeared in my work in various forms over the years, sometimes with terrible design. But this time, I'd like to make something I can proudly display at the beginning of the projects I upload to youtube.com slash Visuals. And just to make it more interesting, I'm going to try and do this whole thing on free software. So I'm going to start by looking at my logo. What are some ways it could appear other than just fading in? Start with three lines and add the remaining shapes. Or I can start with a box and rotate a diagonal to fill in the darker parts. That could work. Maybe I can go 3D and consider perspective. What if those triangles are actually straight lines vanishing into the distance? So each of those ideas has a different style, but to be honest, I'm struggling to see how any of them could represent Cade visuals. So I think before I go any further, I need to clarify what the final layout of my intro will be. And for this kind of thing, I normally use Adobe Spark, which is the sponsor of this episode, and also the first of the free tools that I'll be using to create this intro. Now with any design, there are so many decisions to make. Uppercase or lowercase text, which font and which colors, how big is the logo and how is it laid out. So I like to look through some of the free themes as a starting point for all of those decisions. I can adapt this one into this or this one into this. After plenty of experimenting with the layout, considering the shape of the logo and the number of letters I've got, this feels most natural. Now I am not a graphic designer or an animator and to be honest at this point, I'm finding it hard to filter through all of my ideas. It's time to ask for some help, so I call up Hugo Mordice, a professional motion designer whose excellent work you can see on screen right now. So when I tell Hugo that my goal with Cade Visuals is to make projects that have nuance and vulnerability, he really encourages me to make sure the intro represents those values. Now when I hear those, that gives me nothing. Vulnerability is, it sounds to me like a very abstract thing to represent in a shape. Um... Well, vulnerability could be very thin element because visually you see oh, you have something very very fragile there fragile. often when i think about um like vulnerability or honesty it's about shedding light on something would be another like a piece of language you could describe right i wonder if, if light could be a representation of some of those things but uh, particularly the vulnerability imagine uh, some kind of a room that maybe you can be inside this three-dimensional space and, and you can play with how the light and the shadow like kind of shows the geometry of the space and that would give it maybe like marble it's going to be an empty room but you want to have those those nuances you want to have those those details That's nice. simplicity always helps like sim simplicity with a great execution is and i go wrong with that thanks for sharing your, your knowledge and i've definitely learned a lot from this and uh, i guess i will I'll send you a link to when it's all finished so you can you can see what I come up with. Sounds good. I'm really grateful to Hugo for his ideas and advice and I'll link his Instagram in the description if you'd like to see more of his work. So with all of that in mind, I immediately start sketching 3D shapes that could create the right kind of shadow. Now I know it doesn't look like much, but I have a good feeling about this one, so I can't resist jumping into Blender, my favourite free software for 3D graphics. Now Blender can be intimidating if you've never used it before but there are so many excellent tutorials on YouTube. If you give it a try, you'll see it's really not as complicated as it looks, especially for a simple intro like this. To recreate my sketch, I set up a couple of boxes and a simple plane with a square window cut out for the camera to look through. Now I can add a virtual light to my scene and move it around until the right shadows appear for my logo. After a bit of playing around, I can see this is gonna work. So I start refining the shapes and the camera's placement so everything is square. Now I can get into the fun stuff using simple keyframe animation to create different movements. In the spirit of experimentation, I'm testing lots of different ideas, like making the cuboids move into position, moving the virtual camera back to reveal the final logo, and moving the light so the shadows appear at the very end. Now, looking at all of this, I must remember Hugo's advice to always bring it back to the values of Cade Visuals. The lighting change seems to fit nicely, showing the nuance of the shades of gray between the contrasting shapes. But with those words in mind, you know, vulnerable, delicate, nuanced, I can't help but think that the animations are a little bit too intense. So after lots of tests, this is the animation I'm going for. Just one box moving into place while the camera moves slightly closer. Meanwhile, the light moves more dramatically from one side of the scene to the other. 
So now that I've got my general idea in place, there are still many decisions left to make. I do like Hugo's idea of using a marble texture, so I'm going to head over to cc0textures.com, which is a pretty good place to find free textures for 3D software. The rest of it I decided to keep pretty simple, so while I'm waiting for the scene to render, I'm going to start working on the sound. And this is where the third free tool that I'm using to make this intro comes into play, DaVinci Resolve, a powerful piece of video editing software that's also free to download. I reckon I can kind of use the sound of a light switch to highlight the abrupt beginning of my intro. I tried messing around with concrete scraping sounds for the movement, but it didn't really fit with the speed of my animation. Next, I watched through again, looking for visual cues that I can follow. To finish, I added a quiet little sound as the scene gets darker, which is just a whew sound that's been slowed down to 25%. I think I'm getting close now, but there's one more thing I want to try. When I was testing one of my renders, the variations between each screenshot made a kind of jitter effect that reminded me of an old celluloid projector. So I think that recreating that flicker effect in a really subtle way helps tie everything together. A little reminder that Cade Visuals isn't a company making computer monitors or glasses. And so here's my final intro. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And of course, this is all subjective, but I kind of think it does represent the values that I'm aiming for with Cade Visuals. But the real test of this intro will be time. When I look back at some of the first intros I made when I first got into filmmaking, I cringe at everything. The fonts, the colors, the sound, even the concepts. So I wonder what I'll think of this a year from now. We'll see. Well, hopefully this has given you some ideas for your future intros or title sequences. And as we wrap up, I'd like to say thanks to Adobe Spark for sponsoring this video. If you want to find out more about Spark, I've included a link to a free trial of their premium subscription, which includes access to many more fonts and additional templates. But otherwise, my name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next time.